Hi, I'm Colby with Valley Implement. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the different monitors options for the Case 4 Series XL balers and the New Holland Plus balers. Um, we have two monitor options for these balers. We have the Case Pro 300 or the IntelliView 3. It's a 7-inch touchscreen display. Or we have the Case Pro 700 or the IntelliView 4, which is a 10-inch touchscreen. Uh, the only difference between the two screens is that one is bigger than the other as far as operating the two displays it is identical so for the, the sake of the video we'll just focus on the bigger screen um, we'll just go through some of these run screens on the display over here on the left hand side of the display you can see your different Baylor parameters um, these are programmable to whatever order you like or if there's different parameters you would like to see um, up here along the top of the display you can see your oiler, your fan, and that we are in automatic mode and our load is set at 75. The X's through the different uh, emblems means that the functions are turned off. As the baler speeds up to 600 RPM, those X's will disappear and that will mean that those functions are then turned on. Um, our auto means that we are in automatic mode meaning the density system will automatically adjust to maintain 75, which is what we are set at. We can change that to manual mode if we need to, and I will show you how to do that in a minute. Up here along the top, you can see our job name, and we just have it as test. Um, this can be your field name to keep track of your bells per field, and I will show you how to adjust uh, or to change your field name. Down here in the center of the screen, right now we have a picture of the baler. Um, as the baler speeds up to 600 RPM, you will have two funnels appear. You, you can see here, the funnel on your left is your, or your load funnel, and that shows every time the plunger hits the bell, it shows what the, the plunger is reading for load. And that is trying, right now in this, this picture, it's showing 69, but our load is set at 94, so it is going to start squeezing harder on the bell to try and maintain that load of 94. This funnel on the right is your capacity funnel. This will be the one that you pay the most attention to, and it has the uh, three, three, two, one lines on it. And how you want to run that funnel is you want to try and run just above a whole number. So if your field conditions are ideal and you have ideal windrows, we will run just above the number one. If we can't run above just the number one, we want to slow down to just above the number two. We don't want to run between the two numbers if we can, because that will allow us to the baler to make the best consistent bail. Um, up above the two funnels you have these two graphs. These graphs are your photo sensors for the, uh, your driving indicators. Um, the, as you're going through the windrow they will move up and down indicating which way you should drive and these arrows will point to which way you should drive. So as we move over here to the right hand of the, the display you can see there are several different um, icons to touch. If we touch this number one, the icons all change. We'll start at the top and work down. The A slash M is what changes us from auto to manual. So when we hit that, you can see that changes us from auto, automatic mode to manual mode. Touch it again takes us back to automatic. The plus and minus is what we use to increase and decrease our load. So if we hit the minus button, that takes our load down. Hit the plus button, brings our load back up. Moving down, we can see we got the first one here. This is our lights. Since we're not actually hooked up, it's telling us our light isn't hooked up. But we touch that, that turns our baler lights on. If we touch the, this down button, it'll then show our service lights and our beacon. Um, if your baler isn't equipped with a beacon, it, it won't show the beacon icon there. So um, same function as the other lights, you just touch it to turn them on or off. We touch this number one again, it brings us back to our main home screen. Moving down along the right hand side, we have the number two, which changes our parameters over here on the left hand side of the monitor. We can change those to see another set of parameters if we would like. Um, I think on this better, they're set the same. Um, moving down, we have our field settings page, which doesn't show anything. If you had a electronic bell length or a moisture sensor kit um, on the baler, there would be different settings that you could program into there. Next icon down is our memory page. This is where we set up our, our different field names to keep track of our bell counts field to field. You can see here we have one that's locked and one that's unlocked, meaning the one that's unlocked is the field we are currently on. We can touch that and it allows us to see 
how many bells we did in that field. Um, we can edit that bell count if we had to do some rebells or anything like that. We can enter our customer name if we're doing custom. And this will allow us to keep track of our, our different field to fields. To add a new field, you touch the memory button again, and you can see it pops up this plus button. We touch that, that allows us to enter in another field if we were moving field to field or to another customer. Moving down along the right hand side, the next one is the service screen. Uh, get a lot of questions on guys who turn their bather on and it pops up and says service required. Um, this is the, the screen that you need to go to to get that service required turned off. You can see here we have, moving from the top down, we have 10 hours, 50 hours, 100 hours, 250 hours, and 2,500 bells. So typically after 10 hours, you will see this will be in red and you can touch it and it will come up and say, did you complete the service? You hit the check mark and it resets that service reminder. Um, then that way, the next time you turn your bather on, it's not going to say service required. And you can do, that'll happen for each one of these hour intervals. Moving down along the right hand side, the next one is the machine setup. This is uh, what your bather is equipped with. So, uh, like for instance, this bather has a revolving flashing light. Some bathers don't, some bathers don't have work lights, things like that. If you add or remove things from your bather, we need to change that here in the service in machine setup to, to allow the bather to work properly. Moving down, next one is your information tab. This tells you what model bather you have, what software is in the bather. This bather actually has a bell weight kit on it, so you can see that the software in the bell weight kit is there. Um, this is also a great place to get your serial number if you're on parts with or on the phone with parts and they ask you for your serial number. You can get it right there without even having to get out of the tractor. You can see the total hours on the bather and the total bells on the bather as well. Moving down, the next one is our active airs. Right now, this bather doesn't have any active airs. Had you, should you have an active air, this is a great screen to go to uh, when you call into service because you can uh, tell the service department what air you're seeing and what air code number would be on there, which would allow us to, to see exactly what you've got going on. The next one down is your air history. So you can see is the air history along the, when this bather was being built, there were a couple airs that popped up. So for instance, this is air 237 for the bell drop sensor. So if you were to call in to service with uh, an issue, that would be a great information to give is that you have air 237 for the bell drop sensor. That would allow us to be a little more prepared when we come out to look at the baler. The next two along the bottom, they have a one and a two. And what these are is at that main run screen, these are the parameters on the left hand side of the screen that you can view. You can change these to view any different number of things in any order that you like. Um, it's just operator preference. The number one is the number one run screen. Number two is the second run screen. Um, same thing, you can program them in any order that you like and see any parameter that you want. The bottom two are diagnostic inputs and diagnostic outputs. These are mainly used by service technicians. Uh, if we were to come out and look at the baler and have, uh, have an issue that we needed to diagnose, uh, mainly for operating reasons, this is a screen you'd probably never go to. Um, and then what to get back to your main run screen you can see these arrows up at the top you just tap these arrows and it cycles through all these different screens takes you back to your main run screen um, if you have any other questions on operating the baler operating your baler monitor I suggest that you call your service department we can go through and with you and appreciate your time and thank you